Hello, for our video today we're looking at cell structure and in actual fact we're looking at cell ultrastructure which is to um, do with looking at a much more detail of the types of uh, structures you see within a cell. Here we have what we call a micrograph, an electron micrograph and it's produced by our transmission electron microscope and you'll remember from our previous or from a previous video that a transmission electron microscope has a high resolution and a high magnification that allows us to see all this extra detail so here uh, we've got our micrograph and you can see there are many more structures than you would normally see here we have some roundish kind of structures um, we've got some strand like or stringy structures over here we've got this large structure which is actually the nucleus uh, but you can see there's a lot more detail within the cell than you would see normally with a light microscope. It's quite difficult to actually identify clearly from a micrograph what the other, what the, all the different parts uh, might be and what they might do. But often what you see is a diagram that looks a bit like this, which shows the uh, different parts slightly more in slightly more uh, clear detail than on our micrograph. So we're looking at the uh, ultrastructure and this is a particular kind of cell, it's called an epithelial cell that comes from the small intestine. And the first thing to notice is that we've got these structures here along the top and these are actually microvilli. And these are like uh, little finger-like projections that stick out uh, from the cell and their job is to maximize or increase surface area so they can absorb as much of the uh, substances around them or within the small intestine as possible. There are lots of other structures that we need to know about. I'm going to zip through them uh, on this slide now but we're looking at them in more detail in the next set of slides. So here in the corner we have lysosomes. This is our Golgi apparatus. Here we have rough endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, ribosomes which are either free in the cytoplasm of the cell or attached to our rough uh, endoplasmic reticulum. We've got chromatin which is in fact uh, DNA. We have a nucleolus, a structure called a nucleolus which is within the nucleus. We have smooth endoplasmic reticulum and we have um, there's one mitochondrion, but there are a few there, and the plural, remember, for mitochondrion is mitochondria. Um, the only one thing I would say about this diagram is usually the smooth ER is continuous with the membrane of the nucleus, which I haven't drawn for this diagram, but it's usually uh, joined onto the nuclear membrane there. But what we're going to do now is we're going to look in, in more detail at the different parts. So let's start with the nucleus. What is the job? Of the nucleus. Well, first thing is uh, to know a little bit about the structure. It has what we call the nuclear envelope around the outside. So here I've got a micrograph where you can see this double membrane here, uh, and also on our, on our diagram. This is called the nuclear envelope, and it's just basically the outside covering of the nucleus. We have also in the nuclear envelope we have these pores, which we call nuclear pores and these are basically holes in the membrane which allow larger molecules for example something called mRNA messenger RNA uh, which we don't need to know too much about right now but this is a large molecule that needs to be able to uh, get out of the nucleus in order to do its job and that's one example of something that would pass through the nuclear pore we have a substance called chromatin and this is basically just DNA um, and it's DNA that's not uh, structured into chromosomes and that's usually when the cell is not yet dividing. We have a structure called the nucleolus uh, within the cell there and this has the job of producing or helping to produce ribosomes and on the uh, micrograph on the right here you can just about see the equivalent so we've got the chromatin which is the grainy kind of um, structure here, we've got the nucleolus much larger in my diagram there, the nuclear pore you may just about be able to see one or two but there's one there, there may be one just about there, but either way, uh, that's what the nuclear pore is and does. And here we have the nuclear envelope again. You can see a double membrane uh, around the outside. Okay, so two versions of the same structure. As you know, the nucleus has the job of controlling what the cell does. So we describe it as the control center, and what it does is it actually codes for proteins in the DNA which uh, help the cell to go about uh, the jobs that it needs to do. Okay, so that's the nucleus. 
The next one is mitochondria. Remember that's plural, so one mitochondrion, many mitochondria. And the job of the mitochondria is to produce a substance called ATP. And this can actually release energy. So ATP is a molecule that can very quickly release energy when it's required. We can say that the mitochondria produce ATP, but remember you must never say that the cell or the mitochondria produce energy or create energy. This is not technically correct and uh, you mustn't say it, but you are uh, of course able to say uh, the mitochondria provides energy from the cell. And this does this through the process of aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration happens inside the mitochondria, inside uh, what we call the matrix but we also have these membranes that are folded inwards to provide a large surface area for the reactions to happen and again we have a micrograph on the right hand side as you may see it uh, of uh, in an image of an electron or produced from an electron uh, microscope okay and just down here I've just had a go at doing a 3d version of it not very well but that's how it might look in a 3d diagram okay so that's what the mitochondria do remember cells that are more active will have a higher metabolism. More active cells will have more mitochondria simply because they require more energy to get on with their uh, jobs. Um, the next one we're looking at is the endoplasmic reticulum and there are two kinds. The first one here is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and it's called rough because it has along its membranes it has uh, ribosomes and that's what makes it look like it's got a rough texture uh, the job is to produce proteins or something that we call glycoproteins which are proteins that have carbohydrate attached to them um, and it also has the job of transporting proteins in diff two different parts of the cell so if you've got a protein that's produced over here you can see because we've got this network of um, different structures we can transport the protein from one place to another the endoplasmic reticulum is usually continuous with the uh, nucleus, as, so as you can see, the nuclear envelope here um, joins up to produce this rough ER. The smooth ER that I've drawn over here really should be continuous with the nuclear membrane as well, but I've just drawn it over there. But if you just remember, that's usually found near the nucleus and attached to that nuclear membrane. Okay, so um, that's the rough ER. We also have smooth ER, which doesn't have the ribosomes attached and that has the job of producing lipids and steroids it also produces carbohydrates in actual fact it can store these substances for a while as well next structure is the Golgi apparatus and this has uh, a, a various jobs but those are to produce glycoproteins similarly to uh, what we said before uh, it also produces secretory enzymes and by secretory enzymes we mean enzymes that are going to be packaged and sent outside the cell for example digestive enzymes it produces these things called lysosomes which we'll talk about in a sec and it can also modify and store stroke transport lipids as well lipids being uh, types of oils or fat that the cell might need for various jobs again I've got a micrograph picture here so you could recognize it from the two different versions one clue as to something or a structure being the Golgi rather than a smooth ER is you often have these small vesicles uh, which transport proteins or substances made uh, by the Golgi uh, to different parts of the cell or in fact also to the outside of the cell. Um, the last thing I want to look at is the lysosomes and these are structures that contain enzymes so they would very likely be produced by the Golgi as you can see so these could very easily be lysosomes and their job they contain enzymes and their job is to either um, destroy organelles that are old and worn out sometimes they can destroy the whole cell uh, if it's not functioning properly or it's damaged in some way um, and one example of where lysosomes are used you may remember in a GCSE video we talked about how uh, bacteria uh, can be engulfed by white blood cells here with the little red dots inside them are the lysosomes and these can empty their contents into this little vesicle here where the bacteria is or are 
and then break down and destroy the bacteria. So that's where you would find lysosomes as well. Um, very briefly, the last thing is ribosomes, and these help to produce proteins. Um, they're very small, usually around about 25 nanometers, that's 25 billionths of a meter. Uh, but there's two kinds, it's what we call the 70S and the 80S type, and this is just basically ones that you find in either uh, animal cells or what we call eukaryotic cells or sometimes in bacterial cells. The bacterial cells tend to have the smaller ones. Bacterial ribosomes. Okay so a very quick overview of the different organelles. Um, unfortunately a lot of it actually is just memory work. You have to remember what these different things are and do. Um, so I won't go on about this uh, too much longer now and leave you to maybe go over this video again or have a look through your notes to make sure you've got it under your belt. That's me done for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon.